Oh. All right, and now, hold on, I gotta go back to the thing to find the script that I have to read. Not there, not there, not there. All right, here it is. All right, pursuant to chapter 20 of the act of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting can do so by clicking on the live link to the Zoom meeting that can be found on the public meetings calendar on the town of Amherst website or by dialing in by phone. The public is able to comment during the public comment segment of the posted agenda by raising their hand. This meeting is being recorded and will be posted to the town of Amherst YouTube channel. And I see no members of the public present. Am I right? Correct. And yes. and Robert is here. Yay. So we're all here. The gang's all here. And um, I believe Maureen was planning on popping in at some point. Oh. So ho hopefully we'll hear from her. <laughs> all right. Did, um, did everybody read minutes from the last meeting yes i did yep i did okay yep i did does anybody have any corrections to the minutes from october no okay i move that we approve the minutes from october all right all oh wait Maureen is here. Hold on. Oh, so now we got one member. Yep. Um, so all all approve. Say aye to the minutes. Aye. 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 All right. Uh, minutes are approved. Wait. How do I get her in? Hold on. She's got her hand. Ah. Wait. This. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's right. Hold on. Does anybody remember specifically how to get her in here? Oh, wait, more. Promote, there it is. Oh, okay. Yeah, could you find it? I, I clicked on the thing, but I'm not seeing her popping in. I clicked You're on. Good. Under host, you go to this little dot. She's oh, here. here she, here she's, oh, okay, okay. Great. it's just. I guess it just takes a minute to go up to space and come back down, right? Hi, Mom. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi, Maureen. Um, I had a correction for the November 2nd meeting minutes. Um, it says that I was there to start the meeting and I was not. So that needs to be stricken. Well, when did you come in? Um, it, it it is noted later on when I did come in, in the oh, minutes like that right. is correct. But at the very very top of the minutes, it um, there is yeah, that right. error. Thanks. And the ones who would. Now, do you think we need to um, approve those minutes officially since it wasn't an official meeting? Why well, wasn't an official meeting? Are we talking about November 2nd? Yeah, the November 2nd meeting. Well, it wasn't like a super official. Well, meeting. I think we should approve them and we did. And we just make that correction by unanimous consent. How's that? Okay. Um, so I'm taking Maureen off of the people at the beginning of the meeting, but she was there later, right? Right, she's shown it was not at the, I did not start that meeting, but I would, well, I, I showed you, up. I mean, I'm sorry, I said, oh, Maureen, I met you. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. Well, that's. Yeah. Uh, do you remember exactly when you where on the on the agenda you came in? Because <clears throat> so, how many people did we have before you showed up? 
I think it was four, including Maureen. It was Maureen, Terry, Lori, and yourself at right. that meeting, oh, at the we, opening. We and then I have, showed up late. We, yeah, do you remember when? Because we didn't have a quorum until you showed up. Oh, um, it's noted in the minutes. It's right there in the minutes. Like okay, you put fine. it in there when I showed up. Okay, so thank you. I, I I'm can't not sure when I did, but it, the notes know. Okay, that's fine. I just can't read it. I've got too much stuff on my computer to look. Okay. Now, do you, um, with that, does anyone else have any other corrections for those minutes? No. No. Right. I, I'm, I move to approve those minutes with those corrections in mind or with that correction in mind. I second. All right, I'll approve, say aye. 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 All right, now, um, minutes approved. Um, ne next, we should be doing chair report, but I feel like I would rather um, be respectful of Maureen's time and go to making it public since we don't have any um, public comments because there's no public here. We'll um, go into the making it public project, especially since that's like, you know, our gigantic looming project right now. Um, there was, did everybody get a chance to browse the, what happened, some of those decisions and whatnot? I have some notes like about that. It was really interesting to, he, to hear about like the history of Kendrick Park and Sweetster. I hadn't known many of those things. Um, but in the, in the notes, it says that Kendrick the Kendrick Park um, Grinspoon sculpture is, um, it's noted as a permanent piece, but that's actually a temporary piece. All of Grinspoon's pieces are meant to be like only last like maybe two years. And I think like um, making that notation in those notes would be encouraging for people to understand like just how like semi-permanent temporary could be, you know, as their interpretations. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, I was happy to see temporary like right in the title of it, because I think that's important. And uh, anybody else have any stuff? I've got more things, but I don't want to like just rail on with my big list here. I'm sorry, I kind of lost the thread. What what were we correcting or talking about? Just uh, well, I, I was just talking about like um, the notes in general. What notes? The the notes. Well, the what was it called? Not my notes. No, Something the one about. from Maureen. Oh, okay, fine. That's like the call for artist um, draft. Okay, fine. Essentially, no and this like, is look, this is. Let me minimize me. again and get to the actual like. And this is under making it public, right? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And let me see if I can share my screen. That's something I've never done in one of these things. The little green I... thing on the bottom of your screen with the little layer, it's green. It says share screen with the arrow pointing up. Click it. Shoshana, would it be helpful if I shared my screen? Yes, yes, it would. Yeah, sure. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. You probably do this a lot more than I do. <laughs> okay, thanks everyone. Uh, oh, there we go. Uh, view. Yes, perfect. Oh, that's even the spot right there with the oh. picture, the green oh, the picture. Yep. Okay. What are we doing? Well, this is um, what they put together for the uh, the call for artist. Oh, so there was a document displayed, which was the call for artists. Yeah, and it's a great document. It's got like all this great information in there. Okay. Oh, James, did you not receive it? I I didn't get it for some unknown reason. Can you just scroll up for a minute? And let me get. Oh the yeah, sorry about that. I thought I emailed open everyone. But I, open. I didn't get it either. Who who just said Nor that? Nor did I. I I didn't get it either. Open call for I artists. Know. I'm sorry, either. guys. Okay, well, I'd if it's helpful, I could walk everyone through this. Uh, so at the last meeting, was that last week? 
November uh, 2nd. November 2nd, yeah. Um, I shared a, a draft review of, for the open call for artists for the um, the temporary public art project. So the town has been given $10,000 to put out a call to artists for temporary art. Um, and so this would be the call. Um, this call needs to go out by the end of this calendar year to meet the needs of the, the, um, the grant source, who is the New England Foundation for the Arts. And then next year, we could, um, the artist will install the art piece and, you know, have a ribbon cutting and all that. Um, so that can take place next year, but um, this is the call. And so uh, I can walk you through the different sections. It's just, uh, well, uh, it's six pages now, but we'll, uh, we won't. Maureen, um, can you make sure to email that, please? I have to put that with the minutes. Oh, sure. Yeah, absolutely. So the first paragraph is just saying, you know, we're doing a call for artists for proposals, um, focusing mm -hmm. in the downtown Amherst area. Um, and then the, it, the, it's being founded by the New England Foundation for the Arts in partnership with the Metropolitan Area Planning Council Arts and Culture District and uh, Forecast Public Art. They're a, a nonprofit for for art and then with, with uh, staff support i.e. me from the planning department. And so uh, at the last meeting, we uh, reviewed the project overview and scope. Um, and, you know, although this link, uh, this link right here, we can go to it real quick. Um, it shows existing public art in town and there's a real focus in downtown. And cool, it was pointed it? out that, um, that this does need to be updated. Oh. For instance, the temporary art at Kendrick Park is not shown. Uh, uh, this is the portal. This was a, a art piece that I, it looked like this. Um, but I don't believe that's no uh, is no longer there. But the the other the tr sort of tree um, um, uh, public art installation by the playground is there. And um, but this is a really good useful um, document for for, you know, I think your commission and then uh, for people, your commission in general and the public, but in particular for uh, anyone applying for this grant, to sort of get a sense of what kind of art does uh, does uh, exist here in Amherst. And yeah. so we thought that the focus should be um, keeping with the, the, um, the theme of art downtown and um, doing this call for, um, to um, do uh, for an artist to create new original artist designed or fabricated temporary public art. And um, after speaking with um, multiple uh, staff members uh, in the planning department, um, we wanted to um, offer two locations for consideration, Kendrick Park and Sweetser Park. Um, I did reach out to Do uh, Dave Zomack, the assistant town, uh, town manager, and he is the director of conservation development about the, um, there was a, a idea last time about um, considering um, uh, something along the Robert Frost Trail. And um, he, uh, Dave said, that's a wonderful idea somewhere, may, may perhaps along Robert Frost Trail, or he then actually even suggested um, the commission to explore uh, Mount Pollux as another opportunity, especially since it has like mm. such a beautiful view. But yeah. he did feel that, um, that uh, particularly the Robert Frost Trail, at least for this project, since we have such a limited time, this needs to go out by the end of this calendar year, that um, there's a lot of complexities of doing something around Robert, along the Robert Frost Trail. We, like we would wanna make sure that the trail is completely ADA accessible. There's parking that's adjacent to it that is also ADA accessible. And then just making sure that the if it needs to go through the Conservation Commission, um, that it goes through those channels. And so, and into getting on those agendas does take a couple months in the making. So he did feel just like those factors alone that perhaps we should just focus in the downtown for now. And then, and in the future, he definitely loves the idea of temporary art uh, on conservation trails or properties. Um, and then we had, um, so temporary art examples um, considered under this call could be murals, sculptures, integrated architectural or landscape architectural work, community art or digital new media. I did previously suggest, and we discussed performance and festivals, 
I reached out to a couple uh, folks. Uh, I reached out to Gabrielle Gould, who's the part of the Amherst bid and the Drake and the cultural district. And I talked to Jen Moyston, who uh, it works in the DEI office and is um, been spearheading um, the Juneteenth event. And um, they've, she and others have organized that two years in a row. And they both agree that um, this grant is up to $10,000 and having a one day event um, is very costly. And so like the block party um, costs about $20,000, $25,000 and the Juneteenth wow. celebration, all that um, costs about the same. And so they both said, given that there's a lot of complexities about, uh, about that and that we have such limited time to sort of turn this uh, call around that perhaps um, maybe that's something that, you know, groups, uh, entities could focus on like this commit commission or, you know, the local dis cultural district can spare ahead events. Um, so uh, I definitely respect both of uh, Jennifer Moyston and Gabrielle Gould's opinion on this. Um, and so th that's my suggestion to this commission to um, maybe uh, just focus on something like physical instead of an event um, yeah. just because of the time and um, the complexities and, and the costs. And then yeah. temporary art installation timeline, the project is temporary in nature. Um, I said one day, minimum time frame of one day thinking of an event, but maybe um, if we aren't thinking about events, we could say something like three months or, or whatever, three months to one year, six months to three years, uh, we could play with that. Um, and then what is this? And then so I forget if I already said this. Oh yeah, so Kendrick Park or Suitsa Park um, was an idea from town staff, both, you know, um, in, you know, in downtown along, um, you know, uh, ADA accessible routes and, you know, very, you know, in very populated areas and um, and all that. It, the um the way it describes it makes it seem like it has to be in either Kendrick or Sweetster and that there's not like a space for someone else to have an idea you know what I mean as far as like what an artist might propose all right so are we are we um definitely like nailing it down to one of the two parts at this point with the plan I think board? we talked about the fact that it may be easier for us to put an open call if we selected the location first, but that was still kind of up in the air for us to decide. And that's why we're, why we have these two in mind. Yeah. And, you know, I think either location would work really well. Um, they're both very visible um, and eye catching from the street, from people driving by or people walking by and that are just you know, going for a casual walk and then stumbling upon art, you know, there's that new playground that that's at Kendrick Park um, with walk with like uh, walkways around wa around the tr uh, around the park. And then there is a, even already that temporary art installation. So it could look nicely uh, with that. And then Suites of Park is a nice, lovely uh, space that has um, benches, some picnic tables, and there are events during the summer there um, through, I, I don't know if it's the bid, they have a, a concert series. Um, and so that yes, could they be do. a really nice, like, um, comp, um, you know, nice piece for those attending that. And it's also right across from the police station. So it's very visible and, um, and they'll definitely, you know, be well lit and I don't think anyone's going to be messing around in front of the police station. <laughs> Although poetic dialogue is right across from the police station too and that didn't save it. Mm. <laughs> and then, but that's a whole other kettle of fish. Yeah and then so uh, so um I'll uh I'll get in contact with Grinspoon to find out like how long his the lifespan is of the piece that's in there now because it will be an issue on like does this new piece of art have to jive with the one that's up there now or is that going to be removed by the time this installation goes in that's is that shona saying that what's that was that shona yeah 
Oh, here we go. So you don't know. It's not like normally I think the lifespan is just when it falls apart, he takes it out. But we can't really, you know, make plans around it with that idea. So I'll see if he's got any other ideas. Do you think it's a pro uh, an issue that if it's still there or you just want to make sure that it wouldn't get removed? Uh, so well, we I just think like, it. as far as like what another artist would want to know, like, uh, do they want to know, you know, they might want to know whether or not this is going to be like a competing thing in the space that they're thinking about. And like, okay. maybe they want to do something that would, you know, sing in harmony with that, or yeah, maybe, I see what you, mean. you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Or maybe that won't be an issue at all and because it won't be there. And so it'll be just their space. Like just to help the, the artist get a vision of, you know, what their plan is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it help it might knowing if it's there or not, it might help influence their aesthetic or the scale. Um, whether that art piece is still there during that time frame. Yeah. Um, and then, so um, another note, um, I did, uh, uh, I shared this call to artists with Paul Balkelman, the town manager, and with uh, Pamela Young, the director of diversity, equity, and inclusion office, and Jen Moyston, who's the assistant director of the DEI office, to get both, um, all, all three of their uh, input. Uh, they, um, they all... Uh, Agreed that they really like this draft and that they're happy that that um, that this is finally going to happen, and that I'm working with you all. Um, they're all very excited. Uh, Pamela did suggest that uh, she said my only suggestion would be to have a theme that celebrates the BIPOC or other marginalized communities. Um, in a recent listening session sponsored by the African Heritage Reparations Assembly. A number of students noted that the lack of BIPOC representation in public spaces. I think that is that is also true for members of other marginalized groups. Great. And so this uh, paragraph. Hold on a second. Is this the paragraph? Oh yeah. So this is the paragraph um, that gets into. Uh, we had initially thought, well, maybe there shouldn't be a theme. Maybe. Uh, or maybe there should, should, you know, leave it open um, and let the artist decide who's submitting their proposal or not. Um, and so um, um, I wanted to hear your input on that. Um, and if that could be something that um, could be captured in this call uh, is uh, Pamela's, um, with Pamela's suggestion. Uh, well, call. originally, um, in that meeting in August with all those other people, they were all very adamant about leaving it completely open so that an artist would be unrestrained in their, in their inspiration. Who was adamant? I'm sorry. Um, it was a group of people like um, Gabriel Gould was there. Um, um, Eric Brody was there. And some other people like uh, around from around town, like power players from around town. So I think if we keep it very wide open, then we, as long as we have a good panel that has, you know, that we, we choose, then we can make sure to choose something that we think is more representative. You know, we could leave it open like that. That does encourage more people to apply. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, there's also a spot about like, you know, we will be encouraging BIPOC to um, to apply. Like it's not just as a theme, but like, but also in like in the encouragement that's in another spot. At, is it like down a little bit if we scroll down on this document? Sure. Um, so uh, this, uh, just as we're breezing by this, this is uh, context and background. I, I did just take this off the website. So I, I'm i not as crazy, creative as you may think. So this just talks about <laughs> whatever I, the website. I did into. find it interesting that there was so much talk about the trees. And I was like, yeah. oh. <laughs> I did have to research this part. So UMass, um, the Museum of Contemporary Art, if you 
if you recall, if you were living in Amherst in 2018, they did a temporary art like installation. It was called like XTCA, Cross Town Contemporary Art and mm -hmm. Outdoor Public Art Exhibition. And it, it, it was art connecting the UMass campus to downtown. And so there was like this whole sort of pathway that had exhibits on various uh, properties. And one was on Kendrick Park. Oh, awesome. um, and you can find out more um, with this link provided. It was pretty cool. And then they even had like maybe a conference and they had a parade at the end. And I, yes. it was it was a really um, well thought out exhibit. Um, and that's was, actually how we got the Grinspoon there. Mm -hmm. Everybody yeah. liked the Grinspoon so much. He left it there. And then when that fell apart, he gave us this new replacement one that we, is there now. Yeah. And then this paragraph just gets into the history of Kendra Park. Um, there were multiple homes there um, and um, and slowly they all um, were either demolished or relocated. And uh, if you click on um, this link, it, it gives you even more history of Kendrick Park and, <laughs> and the Kendrick family. And then Sweetser Park, uh, and then I have Google uh, links to Google Maps so someone could figure out um, the um, where it's located because there's no house, there's no address, so I couldn't type in like 10 Main Street. Um, it's uh, so that that was the best way of showing that location. And then oh, yeah. um, this gets into the um, some of the history it's of the property. And, yeah, and. Um, and I, I oh and I, I meant to uh, just go out and take a photograph. I feel like maybe um, I didn't provide a photo, but yeah, it gets into the history of the property. Mm -hmm. And then if you click here, um, it, um, it, it brings you to the town website where there's more information. This whole Google Doc or this whole doc is in our Google Docs on our Amherst Public Art Commission um, Google group page thing. I'd, I'd love to be able to get in there. I can't access it. Oh, it's I thought we still, got you in there. It's yeah. still tricky to get in there. And yeah, I wish we could change the, the securities on it. Yeah. Well, um, hopefully I have all your emails um, and I'll double check and I'll, I'll try to email this off after tonight's meeting. And then this paragraph just gets into like, you know, you can receive up to $10,000 covering all, all costs, including design fee, materials, fabrication, transportation, and installation. Yeah, actually, I was thinking the $10,000 should maybe go up higher, like right up at the beginning so that like right away mm. when they're looking at it, they've got a mind like, okay, this is a big project. This is serious. Yeah, mm. no, yeah, thank you. I'm just going to write $10,000. Well, just, what does um, that say? Because if you say this is going to be 10, 000, up to $10,000 covering all costs and somebody has $11,000 worth of costs, they're going to say, you agreed to cover all the costs of so giving my 11 grand. So you got to be careful how you word it, that's all. Mm, yeah, that's a really good point. So I guess one thing that should be noted, and I, I, I will work with our finance department and, um, and then um, people, uh, others in the planning department, um, we would want them to make sure to provide, and I'm going to highlight this, is uh, uh, submit a, like a proposed budget so that they um, they they should know, you know, line item by line item what everything should cost. And yeah, and, and if yeah. it is, turns out to be more than $10,000, they would have to pay for that. Um, but, you know, they would, um, you know, based on there would be a selection uh, committee that will be really thinking about this is what their what, you know, the types of submissions provided, how professional are they, how well thought are they, um, those are something that will be like a really important um, aspect of reviewing proposals. And mm -hmm. then um, this pair our uh, bullet list gets into gu guidelines and specifications. The, this is a site specific work. Be mindful of the location, its history and current day use. The selected artist is responsible for costs of design, fabrication, delivery, and assisting in installation of the art piece to the designated location on schedule. The selected artist will be responsible for maintenance of their art piece for a maximum of one year. I guess, uh, yeah, um, yep. Um, and maybe that needs to be yeah, uh, fleshed out more. I, yeah, um, let me just put, mm, 
review. Okay. Um, um, selection criteria will include, but not limited to uh, aesthetic, site-specific town, originality, safety, visibility, uh, uh, is it feasible, dur durability, and ADA accessibility. Um, so in that selection criteria, should we mention something about um, um, the diversity that we're looking for something that um, represents a diversity in our town, or would that be, is that further down? Yeah, I it is. Yeah, there is something like that was somewhere, down. but no, yeah, but you make oh, yeah, it an intellectual process. Okay. Yeah. Okay. In the eligibility, I was actually thinking uh, it might be good to put in um, disabled and neurodivergent as well as because we've got like, you know, the BIPOC, the queer and the trans. I, yeah. I think it would be nice to put in um, disabled and neurodivergent as well. We need to maybe wordplay that a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah, we need a board. Persons with disabilities. Thank you. Um, including, uh, well, isn't neurodivergent example of a disability? Not necessarily. Oh, okay. it, it, there's such a broad spectrum that it's not protected under disability. You can neuro, 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 sorry, neuro. you're gonna quickly realize that I'm not a I'm not the greatest speller. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Neither am I. Uh, neurodivergent. Uh, is that neurodivergent? See, that's why they gave us squiggly lines to fix it. Let me just highlight it so I can remember yeah. to just okay. spell check that. Could I just make a suggestion on on that in terms oh, no. of um, eligibility? I, I feel like maybe we should get some um, input from the diversity folks in town. I, I My concern is that enlisting lots of groups, we might exclude someone unintentionally. Um, so I guess I would defer to the folks in the diversity, equity, and inclusion office. I, I'm sure they have experience in terms of language to use to make it the most inclusive. Um, I just wouldn't want to as I said, unintentionally exclude somebody if we're if we're being specific about listing. Sure. Yeah, I agree. It's good to have that resource available to us. Mm -hmm. Oops. There we go. Yep. My other question along those lines is um, so I see that. So will someone from the DEI office definitely be on the selection committee or yeah. how um, you know if if the theme is open-ended, but we we know that we want to encourage um, underrepresented artists to participate. My first question is, how do we make sure that this is shared with um, everyone in the community? And then in terms of the selection committee and criteria, um, I'm just curious about more specifics regarding those. Uh, yeah, you make really um, excellent questions. I, I did uh, forward this draft called the artist to Pamela Young and Jennifer Moyston, um, who both work in the DEI office. Um, and they, they, they reviewed it, they liked it. Their only suggestion was to consider um, having a theme that celebrates the BIPOC and or other marginalized communities. Um, and then, how, and then your question is, how do we reach out to BIPOC uh, residents who are BIPOC or other marginalized communities? Um, and and again, this this call is not just limited to residents of Amherst. This is going to be open to the public. We hope that other you know regional and maybe state art organizations will help promote this. Um, but in within down within Amherst, um, uh, you know, we can certainly um, uh, provide electronic. You know, we're going to do list this on the website, um, uh, put it on social media. Um, I can share this with um, different um, with the DEI office um, and see if they have sort of like an email list. And there are various. Um, uh, board, 
town board, such as the African Heritage Reparations uh, Assembly or Commission, um, and reaching out and giving them like the the flyer, the the link to, you know, the link to bring them to the application, um, and ask them, can you help share this information? Um, we can certainly share this with different apartment buildings throughout town by email. Um, we can share this with various, um, you know, nonprofits and reach out. You know, I, I would hope that, you know, the the Amherst uh, Cultural District and the local cultural district will help spread the word as well as, as this commission has, uh, you know, social media presence to help spread the word out there. Um, and yeah, I'm, def I'm definitely open to suggestions of how to ensure that there's enough community engagement that encourages uh, BIPOC or other marginalized uh, com uh, communities to apply for this um, this grant opportunity. Well, I'm also wondering, I mean, I'm familiar a bit with Center for New Americans. I know there are other organizations that, that work with um, uh, immigrant communities. Uh, it might be useful. I don't know if we're able to translate this into any other languages, but in terms of casting the widest net possible, um, if that's yeah. something that can be explored? Uh, we could certainly explore uh, translating this in Spanish, uh, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I am, I'm working on another town project with the senior services department. We're uh, on its age friendly and dementia friendly community project. And we've provided materials and um, talks in Spanish. Um, and so I, I'm happy to um, sort of use those resources and apply them here. What about for Chinese? We have a lot of Chinese in town. Um, I would have to see if we have uh, resources uh, for um, someone that could help us translate in Chinese. Um, I um. I work for Jewish Family Service of Western Mass, and we have a very large New American program. Um, we do translate, like there's a Google Translate on our website to translate into the various languages of, for our clients. However, I don't think those translations are great. Um, they don't always work. Um, there is the Translation Center at UMass that might be able to help translate depending on what languages, but then it does kind of get tricky because what languages do you choose? Yeah. Um, no. I think in terms of no. new Americans, I would say, you know, most of the clients that we serve who are refugees, um, we serve them for five years and generally it's, you know, they're not at a place to be able to, they generally wouldn't be ready to do something like this within their first five years, but. Um, well, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely the opportunity. happy. At least they could have the opportunity to participate if they wanted to. And I think that's where if, something. If they could see it, I think it's like how to get it out there in in a broader way. I'm I'm not I'm not sure that any of them would see it, and just knowing who the, those those pop what that population is, they're very. It's it's mostly in the lower valley, as opposed to the upper valley. So I'm not sure exactly. Yeah, I will say so for the age friendly project that I worked on, we did a, a survey that was targeted to Amherst seniors and um, uh, I reached out to the uh, Amherst regional uh, regional schools and I can't think of the person in the superintendent's office uh, who I spoke to. Ah, I can't think of her name. Sasha, no. Mm. Debbie Westmoreland. Say that one more time. Gabby Westmoreland? No, no, not Gabby. Uh, it'll come to me. But um, so Marta? they say that again. Was it Marta Guarva? No. Mm -mm. Okay. Um, they they need to have translators. Yeah. So both. the way they they do um, mailed uh, communication is they offer in Spanish, English, and then in Spanish, and then they have a page that will say in um. I, um, oof, I, it's in four other languages. Yep. Uh, if you give me a, a second, I can look it up, but, um, it's in like Mandarin, um, just give me one second. Cause now I don't want to misspeak. Um, 
Hold on one second. A trend project. All right, we can all look together. Um, this is the age friendly community project page. Um, so, um, we uh, so we we uh, we mimic the regional school system. Um, they, you know, the schools know what languages are being spoken in schools, and uh, we notice that there are a lot of multi generational households in Amherst. Um, and so uh, they were able to say, you know, there's uh, these languages being spoken. So anyways, we offered in full English and then in Spanish. And then we and then we um, had uh, availability in um, in a Korean Khmer and in um, Portuguese. And um, those were just statements that said in Korean, uh, Khmer and uh, Chinese that if they had um, if they needed assistance that they should call this number and then we could set them up with someone from like UMass uh, translation services. That sounds good. Yeah. Okay, so or and maybe yeah. add in if you know if there are any um, Chris. It wouldn't be able to read it necessarily, but if there's any other languages then that aren't included there to that we can help facilitate the translations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay. So then maybe let me scroll up to where we were. Before. Did we already re we reviewed this? Um, you know, we discussed last time about, you know, I, I did find this in another call to artists uh, and it was for a sculpture and they liked um, the, the call that I noticed. They got specific about, um, you know, it has to be on a four by four concrete foot pad, you know, and uh, on either Kendrick Park or Sweetser Park. So if the commission wants to sort of limit the scale of a piece, this is, would be an effective way of saying, well, it has to, be within this four by four concrete foot pad, um, and that um, it needs to be connected to that. So that's uh, something that you know could be part of this call, or you could just leave it up to the artist and determine the the, the measurements and and the scale of it. Um, but I, I feel like um, the way that it's written, it makes it seem like this is a concrete pad that already exists. And then that turns it into an expense for the town to put that in. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas no, they really... wouldn't be considering that part as part of their budget because it it feels like in this description that it's already there. Yeah. Um, you know, the one group I haven't reached out to is our DPW um, and to see um, their thoughts about would they, um, do they like the idea of having a pad and could, do they have a cost estimate for a concrete pad? Cause you know, maybe we could just say, we could budget out whatever, it, let's just pretend uh, putting in a concrete pad costs a thousand dollars. Maybe the grant incorporates that thousand um, dollars or we just put it on the artist to figure it out and then figure out the, the size and would be responsible for budgeting that out. Uh, I, I'm really reluctant to require somebody to spend 10% for a foundation of foundation of his total grant. This seems like an awful lot of money for, instead of going to the art, it goes to a piece of concrete. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, you know what, I, I to be honest, I haven't given much thought about this. I have no idea how much a concrete pad costs. I, and maybe DBW is, could be like, you know what? Don't worry about it. We'll we'll take care of that portion and we'll pay for it. Um, so if you don't mind, um, I'd like to talk to them to get their understanding um, because that would be a component most likely is how is it going to attach to the earth and who should be responsible? Someone's going to have to pay for it. Yeah. So who who's going to... Who's going to be responsible for that? And let me just highlight this part. OK. 
Okay. And then durable, easy to maintain and install, theft and uh, temper, tamper resistant, resilient, resistant to cutting, sawing with handheld or non power tools, graffiti resistant, non flammable materials should not be sharp edges or features likely to cause injury. And then um, the uh, public art committee responsibilities to co help coordinate and with my assistance, I, I would help coordinate installation with the selected artist in the town, provide contracts um, and payment to the selected artist. It's probably really me in finance department and we'll announce and help publicize the selected design. And then the selection process, it would be uh, the con selection committee would, would consist of staff members such as planner, the tree warden, uh, the DEI uh, director, members of the public art commission, with additional representation from the, the town's disability access advisory committee and the design review board. Uh, the de design review board does have jurisdiction to review exterior changes uh, in the downtown. Um, and so we would wanna um, get their input as well. Um, and then selection criteria will include uh, aesthetics, interactive components, originality, safety, durability, and ADA accessibility. And then the call uh, would be open to anyone that's 18 or older. Town is actively committed to supporting arts and artists from historically unrepresentative and marginalized groups of people. And this would be the language that I would um, want to double, just double check with the DEI office to see um, yeah. that that is um, well um, articulated. Um, and like located in the call of uh, call to artists in general, applicants can be based anywhere. The local and regional applicants will be prioritized. Previous experience with designing and fabricating public art, or uh, I guess since we would be getting rid of this uh, event for this particular project, it is strongly encouraged and recommended, though not necessary. All designs and proposals mu must oh, for must must be feasible and structurally sound by design applications that are not feasible or structurally sound will be removed from, from consideration. App, um, I need to talk to our IT department. Applicants will be uh, accepted um, through website, town website, and also be mailed or delivered to the following address. <clears throat> um, the selected artist must be able to provide a W-9 form in order to be paid by the town of Amherst. I need to just double check with the finance department just to make sure that they, if, if any, you know, if, if anything else needs to be. So provided. I just have a comment on the W-9 requirement. So that eliminates any non-resident aliens. Is that, Ooh, is good. that the intention? Yes, it would, wouldn't it? Pardon? Yeah, I think it's a good point. Because someone technically could be eligible. Uh, the W-8 form is what a non-resident alien would oh. file. Um, w-8? So we oh, might, w you might want to just review that with the town finance folks. Just yeah, again. in the past, it's always been a W-9 that we've done. Right, so a W-9 is specifically for a, 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 someone with a social security number. But I guess my point is if there, you know, potentially could be an artist who is a non-resident alien um, who's living here and, and working here, but um, doesn't have a U.S. social security number. So There's no reason why you can't say a W-8 or W-9. That's really good information. Honestly, um, I looked at many oh. sort of RFPs out there. And so I kind of took here, sure. took there. And I, I yeah, yeah. had never heard of a W-8 before. So this is... Um, Me uh, yeah, yeah, again, I, I would suggest just, just reviewing it with the, the finance folks just to make sure. Yeah. Um, See, that's why we I, got Robert on the team here. Could I um, just go back to the selection committee for a second? Um, so everyone, I'm just wondering what people's thoughts are about including um, a member or two of just the general public. And specifically, I was thinking of, even though the, the, the call is for artists 18 years and older, um, thinking about perhaps inclusion of a high school student on the selection committee. Um, I think that would be excellent.
Why? What, what, what are you trying to accomplish? Um, I guess that... what I'm trying to accomplish is engagement, involvement, trying to, I, I feel like, I, I just recall that after the uh, George Floyd killing on the town common, there was an event um, for the community. And I remember some high school kids spoke very eloquently about their experiences in the school system um, feeling marginalized. And I guess if we're, again, trying to demonstrate the inclusivity of, of this project, um, I feel like it's a way to make some connections. Well, I, I hear give them you. A, give and, and, and help, help them have a voice in the, in the process. The the other side of the coin, I hate to be politically incorrect or anything, because I'm and I, I teach high school students. I've been I've done it for 17 years or more. And you know, I kept hearing the comments about how he had to have a really powerful, very ex expert committee. And a, a teenager probably doesn't fit that description. So if, well, who, I'm sorry, Jim, not to, uh, when you say we have to have an expert committee, who's? Well, we were talking about that earlier, that's all, so I'm just picking up on that. And, you know, if, it depends upon what you want to do, but is a selection committee where you want to, I mean, I'm, I, your goals of, of promoting everything you said about the promotion of teens, I agree with. In fact, I spent a lot of time trying to do that. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, a selection committee to pick out art, and you put somebody on there that that arguably doesn't have the experience needed. I mean, is that that's a cost? And is that cost worth it? Is there some other way we could do the same thing without putting them on the selection committee? Well, I guess I question what the ultimate goal is. I mean, we obviously want something that is, I don't know, aesthetically uh, pleasing. Um, I guess my feeling is high school students have a sense of aesthetics um, and I guess I don't look at this as, you know, a, a, a juried competition necessarily. I, I mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I understand your point, but I guess I also feel like, um, I don't know, it's, it's public art after all. And if we're trying to get the input from the public, we would want the variety of voices that, that make up the public. Yeah. I don't see a cost. It's, it's my feeling. I don't, the cost I, is I that agree. teenagers' brains develop until they're age 25. So if you want the best possible... Um, well, we do allow 18-year-olds to vote, after all. I know <laughs> we do, but I'm just I'm trying to make that... I mean, I, I don't know what I would vote on this. I'm just making the other side of the... Having just came from teaching a bunch of teenagers this today, I mean, they're, they don't have the same abilities you know, physiologically in terms of judgment and and uh, delay of instant gratification in informing their judgments as people who are older. So that well, could, I, that doesn't mean you can't put them on there, but I just wanted to make clear that when you do that, you're getting a different kind of judge. Yeah, I wouldn't want to like stack the whole, you know, selection committee with teenagers, but I think having at least one would be good. I'm thinking like maybe someone from the Sunshine Committee. Aren't they involved in um, art projects already, like in the community? I think that would be not only maybe a good fit for for us, but a good uh, learning opportunity for them to to like have someone what that is that is committee? interested in familiar. this kind of process to to see it like actually happening. Being a what, what is the Sunshine Committee? Sorry, I'm not familiar with that. It's a group of kids at the high school that um, they do a lot of like art projects and they're also very um, active politically. Mm -hmm. 
I've got to agree with Robert. I think they're going to have an open call for artists for applicants 18 years and older. Um, I think it's um, we should definitely be inviting a high school student or two to the selection committee. Okay, it doesn't cost so us I'll anything. Make more, only... I'll make one more point, then I'll shut up. The judge is probably going to be younger than the applicants can be. Yeah, I, I like the idea of it, it being diverse. Um, it, it extends the age diversity to have someone younger. And to me, that also represents a large part of our town community, which yep. are people who will be seeing it, you know, young people and getting them engaged and involved in art in our town. So about, I like the idea. How about also, a college student? Yeah, I'm open that I would be open to that. I also don't, don't oh, see the list or maybe I'm missing it, but a representation from the town, from not just staff, but from the town. Um, so a student would be that. Who, see, I, um, I would I would feel pretty good about making it a college student because I find it somewhat it's like cognitive dissonance almost to, to say that you're if you're 17 you're too young to submit but you're old enough to judge so if you made it college students that wouldn't be an issue and I, I you know that's I guess that's where I I'm thinking it over I'd like to have a young person too I think I'd like to have a young person in, like that in college i guess my my response to a college student though is that a college student doesn't necessarily consider amherst their home the way a yeah. high school student that's true would. i've experienced that quite a bit i because i'm also on the tree committee and we plant a lot and there's i've seen a lot of uh, students that just do not consider Amherst. They just consider it a space that they go to school and they're not, they don't really have a connection. Whereas like someone who's grown up here, born and raised in Amherst. True enough. It's part of their blood. Is there and a... they know downtown very well because they hang out there all the time. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is there um if I may um does anyone know if there's like an art club at the high school? Um uh, there's all sorts of different committees of art at the high school. I work there. Oh, so okay. I can work. I can work on that. I I know all the art teachers. Quite so maybe well. they could help solicit um, interests in in art students or art it, it, to get the yeah. Uh, this could be a really good learning experience for them. Right. Um, and maybe there could be um, sort of a two-way track of there could be a, a general selection committee and then there could be um, uh, a selection committee at through the regional high school and you know they could provide a, a point to help influence the main selection committee i'm just thinking out loud You're thinking like a right. advisor if we could put something together i can know yeah, uh, to all the art teachers yeah so and um also the sunshine committee so are you talking about having an advisory committee is that what you're saying to the selection committee made up of, of a group of teenagers terry well i think she was talking about like a point system if we did when we do the um this the actual selection a lot of times we'll use this point system to um like have someone emerge with the most points at the end and if like one point comes from the kids then that would like be their portion of the voting is that is that correct what you're talking about yeah i was yeah i mean i'm just thinking out loud um but i think terry had something to say and maybe Robert yeah um i think we all have oh, excellent yeah, suggestions know. Um, this is a really great thing to talk about, but we're going down the rabbit hole. This does not, we don't have to decide this right now. We're still needing to work on this call and we need to get this call done and out. So we can talk about the selection committee at any time, but we need to get this part done. So I just suggest that we move along. Yes, good point. Agreed. I agree. Okay, okay. so maybe we could say additional uh, representation from, you know, the DAAC, the DRB. And... I would say the public and members of the public. And so yeah, we can leave it on. open and then, yeah, and then continue talking about this. I, yeah, I think this is a really great idea in general public and, and member and 
Whoops, sorry. And members of the public. Members of the public. Okay, cool. Um, and then I'm just going to highlight it so I don't forget. Um, okay, and then we talked about eligibility. I think we... Uh, so we made it to WA, and then again, this is about under eligibility. Yeah, I think we then, were about to go down to timeline. Yeah, and so um, this is all open ended. It, it it depends on uh, again. I need to get this out. Uh, it would be nice to get this out maybe like the first week of this, like right after Thanksgiving, like the first week of December, mm -hmm. um, and then and then. Um, figure out how long um a call should be i know that obviously the holidays so it could be something generous like you know the last week of january would be the deadline to apply yeah i um, think um having like over a month for a deadline is good but then um we should also have like a secret plan to extend uh -huh. it to have like on the because like usually with the cultural council i find that like on the day of they usually send out a thing saying, oh, we've extended it for like another couple of days. And it's always like, oh yes, thank God. Okay. So I think like a secret extension would be That's good. That's a good point. Because like sorry, artists, you to, know, they always wait till the last second, right? So. Just to it, clarify it the helps. requirements of the grant. So that the call needs to go out by December 31st, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. And then is there another deadline in terms of submissions or project are there other targets that need to be met uh it just needs to be installed by the end of mm -hmm. 2023 um and so if uh and so uh, well you'll see these bullet this continued bulleted list is yeah i really I was like just this kind of timeline. thinking out loud yeah um so if you know i would say if it's the end of Jan january is the deadline and then you would have February and March, maybe by the end of March, the artist is announced. And um, between when March and summer, July, fabrication of the public art piece in contracting is is worked out with the artist. And then between July and September, the, within that time frame, that artwork would be installed and payment would be issued to the artist. And then we would have some sort of public unveiling and community celebration in September and October or October. Sorry, when when was the um, the proposal due back at the end of January? Did you say? Yes, and that that's okay. completely negotiable. Yeah, I guess I would defer to people in the group who are artists. I I have no idea how much time an artist would need to put something together. Obviously, with the holidays in December, et cetera. You yeah, know, it, you know, it could be, you know, mid-February. Yeah, I, to be honest, I, I'm I'm not confident in that either. And then throwing it in the holidays is, a, is a, no, another- I don't think a month is enough myself. Okay, yeah. yeah so I would, like, if it's possible to push it into like early February, I think that would be better. Yeah, early. I'll just say early to mid February. Yeah, no, this is really good. And then it's it'll be in 2023. Oh yeah, good catch. Mm -hmm. Um, and then and then yeah, let's think about that. So then that's the submission deadline. And then I would say like maybe March, April. They might things might just get sh shifted and. I think I think I think it's fine if this sort of organ this part organically gets shifted a little bit. Um, but what are your thoughts about? Uh, is September I think October? selection could take a quicker amount of time. Oh, okay. I think yeah. I think like you know, it doesn't take because it usually it'll happen in like one meeting. Like all of the stuff will get like put together. And then there'll be one meeting where all these people get together and then that point system is used. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. So maybe we'll just say, well, we'll we can say March and strive for that. Yeah. Um, yeah and, and then, then, cause then that gives all the more time for the artists to actually like execute their plan mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and stage it for 
putting it in for installation. Yeah. And then, um, and then this, I just, I think I just took it off the, the website. This is the purpose of your commission is to foster a greater community, greater community awareness of the integration interaction with public art and through public art, promote cultural diversity and an improved quality of life for Amherst citizens. And uh, perhaps this should be um, the placement of this should go up a bit, but um, you know, I'm, I'm happy to, or you guys, if you guys are happy to host a info sex session or, or I can, I'm, again, I'm sort of thinking out loud here, but we could certainly um, offer some sort of info session, which before the applications are um, due. Um, okay. to take any questions and question, uh, yeah, any questions about it. Um, sometimes I can, applications can feel overwhelming. Um, yeah. So mm -hmm. it could be maybe. So maybe early January. Oh, so actually, so that could be the debt and the timeline. Ooh, look at that. Um, so, uh, <laughs> workshops. Um, so January. Um, and then that would be, um, whoops would be the tr workshop. Okay. So Maureen, I had a question, two questions about what happens after the selection committee chooses an artist, like the time period between selection and uh, when the fabrication happens. Um, do we, is there anything that we need to write in about um, like who the liaison would be or like if they're going to check in with the commission at some point mm. and like attend a meeting and like show their progress is there anything like that that usually that, that we usually put into these kinds of things yeah like to kind of help there be a uh somebody who's tasked with you know kind of checking in and seeing how they're doing and or they come to us and say hey, i'm this is where i am on the project and i expect to have this by this date is that yeah. something that we need to write into this or is that something we don't I, I feel like that's a good idea because like of the the price tag involved with this pro like normally yeah. no you know but that's always been a much smaller project I think they need a designated person that they can like a representative they can talk to if they're having problems if they have any questions so we can help the process but I don't know what that usually looks like I'm feeling like that's going to be marine <laughs> yeah well, yeah mean, that yeah. I'm really glad that you brought that up Carrie um you know, perhaps, and I, I'll talk with other staff members about it, but, okay. you know, perhaps it's an email, a monthly email to me. And then obviously, you know, they can call me whenever they want to and, you know, email me whenever they want to. But, um, but um, you know, if there's milestones that they're reaching or um, you, you all would like to meet with them, um, you know, we could have them occasionally come to a commission meeting. But if it's, you know, going smoothly and there's, you know, not a lot of info to be shared. They could just check in with me okay. and then I could forward that information to you all That's, and you can discuss That it. answers my question. You would be yeah. the contact okay. person. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So via Maureen or staff or staff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll find, I'll find from this. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and so that's that's that in a in a nutshell. Um, I think <laughs> we covered covered everything, and yeah, I definitely want to loop back with our DEI office, um, and um, uh, certainly our finance department, and um, and then our um, procurement officer. I did speak to uh, Simone. I can't think of her last name, but she's our procurement officer and she doesn't feel that this needs to go through an official RFP uh, procurement process um, but I want to loop back with her just one more time and and she's seen enough of these sort of call for proposals that um, I want to talk to her and other um, staff about language about um, like monthly check-ins and and just uh, all, all the sorts of things that I've highlighted um, and then I'll certainly loop back with um, with uh, the town manager's office. Dara, did you have something to say? Yeah, I've been having my hand up for quite a while. Oh, sorry. Um, it's, it's best to just like yeah, pipe up that's okay. with this crowd. That's okay. <laughs> this, is, this has all been informative and great. Um, so I have one question, and it's about 
if the $10,000 goes to the artist at the end of the project? That's a question. Yeah, so I have- <laughs> Okay, so wait, let me, yep. let me finish. So when it says that it can be used for materials for the project and cost of development of making the project and they don't have money, yeah, where does that money come from? Yeah, so I, I it's that's a conversation with the finance department, and I've been told that um, that I think they're going to have to provide invoices um, to the town, and then upon the invoice that they can be paid. Um, I wish that wasn't the case. I wish that we could give some or all of the money up front. Um, but I'm. Oh no, no, no. I'm, I'm not. Wait. I'm not suggesting that. But I feel like in the in in you've been very wonderfully detailed in all of the stuff you've gone over with us tonight, and that wasn't covered in terms of there was a thing scratched out. I can't see your whole document, so it's hard for me to talk about it. Oh sure. Really well, but there's some point. Yeah, where it says like fifty percent, and it's scratched out. I did yeah. scratch that out because that was when I um, had hoped that there could be some um, flexibility of payment. Um, so, so I'm not sure what you're saying. You because if you said you said it would have to be at the end, and then you said invoice, and invoices can be sent in the middle. True. So so I'm not quite sure what we're saying here. If you're saying they have to pony up the materials and they only get paid when they submit, that's one thing, which I understand. And if it's they get progress payments, that's another far more complicated thing, which I also understand. So what are we talking about? Well, I, I that's think what I, I think needs to be clarified. Yeah, yeah, and I'm I'm very happy to uh, double check with our finance department um, if if you know if they buy materials along the way, um, you know can can they you know submit the invoice immediately and get paid get paid um, that would be great. So I, I can certainly ask our finance department um, Good. and then Thank clarify you. that in this call to artists. Okay, but you know having spent a lot of time working for banks. It is great, it provided that they use it for the purposes for what they, they receive it and then they finish the project and submit it. But when you start making payments in the middle, you know, but without getting the deliverables yet, then you're going to run the risk of having paid for materials and not getting a deliverable ever because it didn't happen for some reason, you know, it wasn't finished. So that's just a conceptual thing that needs to be thought about. Well, I mean, there are ways uh, such as with construction projects, you have retainage, so you 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 don't pay everything out until you know yeah. final final completion. But I do um, think that it would be worth talking to the finance folks to see if there's you know opportunity for monthly submission of receipts and reimbursement. I'm not um, saying yeah, not do it. I'm saying that it's more complicated than these. Yeah, no, 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 I understand. Yeah. I understand. But I think it's a good point that the Dara makes. I mean, obviously, that's a lot of money to put out up front. That is. You know, I mean, a lot of times, you know, when you start making part, partial payments, you're doing it against payment bonds and all that kind of stuff, which is ridiculous on this. You couldn't possibly do that. Oh, yeah. But, you know, this right now in, in an artist artistic endeavor you pay the money and if you don't get the project back it's just gone you know there's no nothing you can repossess there's no way you can mitigate it or anything it's gone okay well i feel really confident about this um this call for artists right now okay yep. I feel like so maureen will we done some good stuff here I can't see everyone, so I apologize if I'm. Yeah, I can't either. Raised hand. Um, I, I just had one last question. Will we see the final draft of this before it gets sent out, or what, oh, what yeah. is the yeah. timing? Yeah, yeah. So, well, if I could, um, I I don't know when is your next meeting. We, we haven't decided yet. That's our next 
thing we're going to decide? <laughs> um, it, I would say, um, you know, I'm happy to meet again or email you the, a draft copy. Um, you know, ideally, that would, would be like great if you could email one to us all, like when yeah. you get it. So if you could uh, tell us when you're going to do it, I would like to have it for a week. Oh, sure. Okay. Do you guys want to decide right now when our next meeting is going to be? I'm kind of eyeing sure. the 12th, December 12th at six. I, I want to know when we're going to get the proposal first, because like I said, I, I want to be able to read it and think about it. So when well, we... that would give her like uh, something to shoot for as far as getting it to us by the 5th. Right. Would you be mm -hmm. able to do that, Maureen? Sure. Um, okay. Yeah. Um... I'm wondering, yeah, so you so you would say that that the call to artists wouldn't be made available to the public until at least, you know, December 13th. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Sure. Okay, so so what we're saying, I'm gonna put this in the minutes. So we will get the complete the completed final version of the call for art on on the 5th on the 5th december 5th mm -hmm. and that will give us a week to sit with it oh. let me just uh actually i one i didn't check my availability um hold on one second about the 12th uh the 12th is month yeah i can do that yeah, okay. i'm not available on the 12th uh oh all right and you're a key player. We want you on this. Um, is there another time that works better for you? Um, I'm away. I'm just, I'm going to be away from the second or the third to the 12th. I fly home on the 12th, but I, I'm not back by six. I'm flying home from California. Well, how, about, so, how about the 13th? Um, I have something at six that night. I could try to change it or that I could do the 14th, but we're starting to get later and later. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you want to try and change that thing on the 13th? How okay. wiggly is that? Does the 13th work for everyone else? It works for me. It works for me. Okay. That works for me. Somehow there's two Daras on my field of view now. <laughs> um, we we might be meeting one more time the before this final draft is being done because we haven't really even talked about a theme or if you want a theme, there's, a lot, there's still some things we need to talk about. Um, so are we gonna meet one more time to discuss that before we ask Maureen to put out a final draft? <laughs> He's gonna need as much Wait. a lot of time herself hmm. the theme it was i believe we decided to leave the theme up to the artist okay. we did we did we all vote on that and decide that I, I wasn't sure if we had actually all decided that that's okay. something that was an option we said we're either going to leave it you know a, a more general theme of, but have something in place that that maybe says something about uh what we're looking for but in a very general sense but not just wide open we didn't uh, decide it unless everybody wanted a wide open thing we didn't really get to decide which what we're doing there for theme so do we have any ideas about a way we can uh, put out a general theme that so that we're uh so that it's easier for the select committee to actually hone in does that make sense yes. so if we're looking for something that is going to be somewhat um celebrating the diversity in our in our town, I think that we should put out a right. theme that is a very general theme that says something about that. Marie, can you share your screen again? The very top of that, it discusses, the, the top of that um, document, I believe, discusses this. Uh, while the Public Art Commission has written this open call to artists with the intentional omission of a specific theme, we recognize the value and opportunity that this open call for artists pr presents to acknowledge and honor the complex and integrated histories of Kendrick Park, 
or Sweetser Park in a meaningful way for all residents and visitors. We also recognize the value and potential of public art to serve as a platform for community engagement and education. And we welcome and encourage a broad, diverse range of content in the incoming proposals and applications. If you want to do that, no thing. Well, what does everybody think about that? I feel that it it leaves it into the hands of the artist. Right. Which it's is in August when there was that meeting, that was the that was the final decision that was made at that meeting. Um, and but I realize those people aren't here now. I don't so what do we get if if we there's a clear advantage if we don't uh, provide a theme? What is the advantage of providing a theme that would offset the, the, the well, the way this is written, first of all, it it says kind of the most important thing is the the history of the park. And that's great, but I also think the history of the people is more important than the history of the park just me um I, I just think we should maybe say something about uh who we are who we are as Amherst and as you know how does how does that what does that look like I I don't know I'm yeah yeah I know I get what you're saying I think um including some kind of language like that would be um on the I point think with Amherst. If, a, if a person on our diversity committee read that we are prioritizing in the first sentence that we are really committed to with the history of the park um i think there there's going to be people saying well okay that's great but we should also talk about the people who were maybe who were relocated who lived in the park and whose houses were taken and they were relocated so that we can have a park maybe we should focus on the people um especially in that first couple of sentences that should be primary if we say that we are doing something that is celebrating the diversity of our town you know if we do that we're going to i think we're you know, I hear what you're saying. If we do that, I think it's going to reduce the proposals. You know, because that's pretty specific. That's you know the history of the people who are in the park, and that means an artist's got to go research that. And it's just no, a, I, I, you know, sorry. sorry. Go ahead. No, I'm not sure. Uh, maybe I'm misinterpreting what Terry said. I don't think it's the history of the people in the park. I think it's the history of the people of the town, which oh. I would agree with. Um, we would want the public art to celebrate the, I'd, I'd yeah. say it's a complex and integrated history of the, the people in, in Amherst, uh, not not specifically the park. Um, yeah, it's just a little tweaking of the language there, maybe, Robert. Yeah, yeah well, and it's not <clears throat> so specific that the way that it's talking about it, that like it has, like that is an absolute theme. It just has to be respectful of that. So right. be essentially like be you know respectful of the people. I, I don't understand what that means. How about I uh, think right now um Maureen is changing it around a little bit. I think she's doing a good job. How about uh yeah. presents to acknowledge and honor the complex and integrated histories of the people of Amherst? Um integrated a good word. Yeah. Uh, you know, I just um i wanted just to remind everyone of of the mission and core of this commission is, is to foster greater community awareness of the interaction with public art and through public art promote cultural diversity and an improved quality of life for amherst resident uh, citizens um actually it is um residents it's not citizens oh okay thank you um because you don't have to be a citizen to even serve on a commission anyone can serve i mean could you i do, i am hearing you know you you want to talk about you know honoring the people of amherst um could it be something that comes from this statement you know i think we can workshop diversity. and tweak the language and it would be fine yeah, yeah. i don't yeah. mean to stop us here all right. Um, I think right. if you could include cultural diversity up above, that would be good because I, I think you 
shared with us a very specific request from what was it the diversity yeah and so to repeat um where is that email um my only suggestion would be to have a theme that celebrates the BIPOC or other marginalized communities that, that so um the open call of artists presents to acknowledge uh, acknowledge and honor the um cultural it could just say um we recognize uh it could say something that you know the theme is to help promote cultural diversity of our uh we could word wordsmith this yeah we can wordsmith that yeah. okay and let me just uh, type in um yeah because we might get the um proposals from culturally diverse people that are in their essence very abstract and aren't like explicitly ex celebrating anything that anyone could tell but <laughs> just the fact that we're you know giving space to marginalized people to create and not pigeonholing them into creating something that looks like what you know, our committee is going to think that it should look like. Yeah. Am, I, am I saying this in a way that's making any sense? Yeah, like, that's like, what it kind of was on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's Could I ask a question yeah. related to that? In terms of the criteria, the selection committee will be creating the the evaluation criteria. Is that? Yeah. Correct? Yes. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. It's seven thirty. Okay, yeah, we're running really long on this. Sorry, that's my computer. <laughs> and um, since um, so I definitely would like to get the to work on this um, the project theme part with the DEI office to see how we could fine tune it. And um, I'm just kind of going through, I've taken, you know, notes, we should, you know, up on the top somewhere on the first page, at least it should, so, you know, mention up to $10,000. So that's very evident. And, you know, I'll insert a photo and a site plan and those sorts of additions. And I need to insert another photo for Sweetser Park. And then um, talk to our finance uh, department about, you know, getting into the nitty gritty of what needs to be, you know, submitted, they should submit like a line item budget. Um, talking about, um, talking to our DPW about, uh, and town manager's office about how long should the artists be responsible for maintaining um, that art piece and be responsible for it. And then talking to DPW about you know the notion of concrete pad how much it costs can they install it and, and pay for it um or does it actually need to be um, part of this um the ten thousand dollars and then i think that's fine just adding members of the public and then working with our again dei office about the wording about about um promoting this call um for you know uh diverse selection uh diverse groups to to apply and then uh, the wa to discuss it with their finance people and then the invoice process and then and then just like fine-tuning the deadlines so it mm -hmm. seems like other than the theme it seems that a lot of the things that need to be updated is um going to be uh based on input from staff so i was wondering um you know would would the commission be comfortable sort of giving a preliminary approval tonight and maybe uh, fine tuning the theme? Um, would I'm just thinking about the, the, mm -hmm. the limited time we have. And, you know, if I were to talk to our DEI office about fine tuning the project theme, you know, could I email you the whole draft, but, uh, but specifically about the project theme and then you can, individually email me you know a yes no um and so we could get this out um you know sort of you know the first week of december at the latest um just so it doesn't i'm a little worried that the longer you know 
if we post this on the 13th, um, it probably wouldn't be the 13th. There's probably no way that I could, you know, turn this around the next day. And then the next week is, is a holiday. So I'm just, I'm a little worried about the timing of this and it not getting lost in holiday emails and, and vacations. Well, I mean, it sounded like you said we were going to vote on it by mail, which I'm a little worried about the open meeting law on that one. I hate to say, because it sounds so practical. I'd like to do it. And see yeah. how you do that. Would this particular project, like, would that fall under open meeting law? Being that it's not yeah. something, I don't yeah. know. Um, I, I, I work, so I work closely with the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, and um, other boards and and we do uh, uh, we do allow you know all, all the other staff members allow you know emails to go out to board members and as long as you respond back separately and not copy other members that's perfectly fine um, that communication that's not violating the open meeting law um, and okay. so you know tonight if I don't know if you'd be willing to sort of yeah. vote on this as a general document and then just sort of fleshing out this this specific paragraph. And it seems like the other items of this draft proposal are sort of administrative that, you know, should be worked out with finance um, and other staff members. I think I'd be comfortable with that. I'm not, because I haven't got a copy of it. Sorry. I'm voting on something I haven't got a copy of. But I could abstain with the rest of you feel good yeah i feel that we've got a good document here and that we should try and um get it going get the ball rolling on this as efficiently as possible so i vote that we do with the um further approval of the lead-in paragraph Okay, so that's two people who voted yes. Are we going to do a formal vote or? Wait, I'm sorry. I'm not clear. We're voting on a, a draft that's not. Yeah, it, we're voting, voting on whether we want her to start yeah. um, running with this draft and go like to the finance people and go to the. Does that require a vote from this commission? The DIE. Hopefully not. Why don't we just? I, I guess. I guess. I, I guess. I'm just wondering. I, I've never voted on. <laughs> yeah, on a I don't know. Do we need it? I, I would. I would vote on a finalized version, but it seems like a work in progress. I'm not quite sure why the vote is necessary. I think we're just. She's asking permission if if she can continue to work for this and move the ball forward, and then we'll we won't miss our deadlines. Why don't we just? Why don't we just do nothing and let her do that? <laughs> <laughs> right. I guess I, I, I agree with Jim. I, I'm not sure why. I mean, because all of the work has already been done to get this far, and we didn't we didn't vote on that. So I guess I'm just wondering why the votes mm, needed now. Yeah, sure. I have a question. Would would if she, if if Marine goes ahead and takes this, revises it, sends it to each one of us individually, and we reply right. that it's good to go back to her? Is that an essence of a vote of that's an essence of vote of yes? Well, you can, we you can, what I understood, I thought maybe I misunderstood. You can vote on it if you just vote yes or no. But if you start, well, geez, I don't know. I'm going to take her word for that one, but you can't discuss it. Okay. Because so, the problem is that a discussion is like a discussion from one person to me, and then I discuss it with right. the next person, you know, that's. That's what she said. We can't discuss yeah. it. So I think what we're, what we're mm -hmm. proposing and to agree upon as a group, whether it's through a vote or not, is that um, Marine will take this document, she'll revise it, she will send it to each of us. We will each reply with a yes or a no, which is a vote in favor of it or against. And with changes, if we so have any changes. You know, I, you know. I, I don't know. I mean, that. Well, Maureen has said that that's something we can do. So I yeah, think I heard her, but I know a lot about the open meeting law and I don't have never researched this. Um, yeah, I was just, my thought was, you know, a lot of the items that we've talked about are sort of administrative changes just, and are not substantial um, and are sort of better served to talk to a particular staff person. Um, 
uh, like the in finance or um, vote outside of the public. Yeah. The public cannot see how you voted. That's the problem. Yeah. So what I'm asking is, is um, you your approval of this as a general call to artists, um, you know, and that you allow staff to provide those sort of de minimis changes regarding, you know, procurement and finance and still um, yeah. So yeah. So and and I'm asking you to do that here tonight in this oh, meeting. No. Um, and then um and then um allowing you to have me work with our DEI office to um narrow down the project theme. Um, but if you would prefer to uh, and the only reason why I'm asking this is just the essence of time. I, I don't want to do this call to artists days before uh, a particular holiday and and then have people say, I didn't see it because I was on vacation. Um, mm -hmm. But perhaps we'll just get that anyways. So if you would like to, you know, hold off voting on this until your next meeting scheduled on December 13th, could, that's could fine too. Could we... Um, could we change that next meeting and move it? And would people be available instead on Thursday, December 1st, which yeah, would yeah. give you enough time to get it get it where you needed to get it, Maureen? We That's would an yes. idea. if you're available yes. on December 1st, we meet on December 1st, we vote on a completed document. Right. Which is then, sent us how, when would we get said completed document in our hot little hands? Uh, let me look at my calendar. Um, we could have a one item agenda so it, uh, so it wouldn't be so long. Yeah, so today Not is free the, on December 1st. Good idea. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. We, so when do we get it? Um, well, if you were to meet on December, well, today's the 14th. Uh, Thanksgiving's the 24th. Uh, I probably could get something, um, you know, right before Thanksgiving. Um, Maybe by the 23rd. So you can get it to us by the 23rd? Yeah, I think so. That's fine. Thank you, Okay, Molly. That's really nice. All right, the December 1st at 6. Is 6 still a good time for everybody? Works for me. Yep, works for me. Okay, so so I'm going right. to put the minutes that we will get. We will get a completed call to art on the 23rd, right? Thank you, Lori, for your suggestion. Is that right? And then would we skip then the meeting on the 13th, or are we also? I'm trying to make sure I got it right. We're getting um, it. Let's skip it on the 13th then. Let's just do the first. Okay. We Unless can... we have to. And, and like, we I, I guess like leave it open just in case. Wait, no, but you're moving something around for that. Yeah, I just have. keep so your thing on the 13th. Don't don't change the thing on the 13th after all. Okay, so we'll meet on the 1st. If we have to meet on the 13th or sometime later, we'll figure it out. Yeah. But well, hopefully just, we won't because Maureen wants this to go out the week of the 5th. Right, yeah. yeah. I'm Like, I feel like we're like practically ready right now. You know, there's, it's, it is just a lot of like plug-in stuff that I'm confident Maureen can, can so, do. can I please confirm that in the, in the minutes, am I putting down that the committee will receive a completed call for art on November 30? Am I right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. November 30th? Yep. And then okay. we're going to meet on the 1st of December. So, okay. Okay. All sorry, right. I, wait, you. I'm sorry. What What's on November 30th? That's, That's when, when we'll we get, get the document. The, Oh, I thought we were getting it more than one day before the meeting. We are. That's seven days before. No, I thought you said November 23rd. Not oh, no, day. right. 23rd. See, I knew I was wrong. Oh, okay. Thanks, 23rd. <laughs> thanks. I I scratched out 23rd when he said 30th because I thought yeah, it thanks, was changed I when knew, I was writing a note. <laughs> I knew I was doing something wrong. I couldn't figure out what it was. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Maureen. That, I think yeah, that thank, no, thank yeah. you. This has been really, uh, I, I've really enjoyed working with you all. Um, and so, I'll, yeah, everything. I will make those changes and talk talk to whoever I need to talk to and and then make those changes and then email them to you um, as, as soon as I can and, and certainly by the 23rd. So 
Awesome. Um, all right. Excellent. Well, have a nice evening. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you, Maureen. Oh, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. So all right. And just for the minutes, December 1st is the meeting and we're not doing the 13th? Correct. That is correct. Okay. All right. Okay. And okay, we are so over time right now. I think all other issues and let, does anyone else have an issue, a burning issue that they really want to go over right now? I suggest that we table <laughs> our things till our other stuff till the next time. Okay. All right. It, um, so I move that we table our issues till next time and adjourn. I second that. All right. All in favor. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Yay. 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 Thank you all. Thank, Thank you, you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Nice to see everyone. Yeah. Have a good night. Have a good, good night. night. Bye. Bye.